in the early 2000 period, I had a floating native gift store in my home for my young child and my common-law wife at the time over in Village Island catering to the tourists. And I was stirring soup on the stove and this two kayakers walked into the float house and the woman goes, what throws rocks out here, bears or squirrels? And it got my attention, so I asked her, what are you talking about? And she goes, oh, we're camped over on Turner Island at this peninsula. I said, yeah, I know the place. And she goes, we're sitting in a little structure. I said, yeah, there's like a lean-to frame on the beach, on the white shell beach. And she goes, we we're watching the stars sparkle and reflect on the calm water. And all of a sudden we could hear little pebbles, rocks being thrown from the trees behind us and splashing. Ba-dunk, ba-dunk. And she goes, we we're wondering what it was. And I said, well, nothing throws rocks out here except for humans and Bukwis, the wild man of the woods, the male Sasquatch. And it's one of their traits. It's a primate, it's a primate characteristic that Diane Fossey and Jane Goodall established back in the 60s with primates that when threatened or curious, they'll throw rocks. And if they're really threatened, they'll shake foliage or they'll push over dead foliage. And it's documented with chimpanzees, mountain gorillas, orangutans, monkeys, that they do these primate characteristics and acts when they feel threatened. And of course, if you correlate that to Sasquatch Bigfoot sightings, it's rampant. It's across the board. So what is Bigfoot? It's nothing more than North America's undiscovered great ape. But it's also found in Europe, Asia, even down in the South Pacific, Australia. They call it Yowie and so forth. But out here we call it Bukwus and Junakha. And when I told that lady about what I thought it was, she got scared. And I said, look, ma'am, I said, I'm a watchman. I'll go grab your tent with your husband, put it in the boat, and we'll bring you over to our village island. You can camp on the dock. And she said, oh, thank you. I want to do that. But when we came here, of course, I went and looked behind the campsite here, and I found a tree snap. It was about that high where something had grabbed a small spruce tree, busted it, and twisted it. Well, a human can't do that. And it wasn't snow damage. It was fresh. It had been done within a few hours. So that's another primate characteristic, especially of the North American Bigfoot, that they do tree staps. They also do like primitive lean-to shelters and nests. So if you do come across something like that, do I believe in that creature? Of course I do. It's like a white blackberry. You spend enough time out here, you're going to see it. I have heard them. I have seen them in the spotlight of my seine boat, not a quarter mile away from here in native Anchorage in 1994. It's well documented in Dr. John Bindernagel's book, North America's Undiscovered Great Ape, the Sasquatch, about my encounter with three of my crew men on board, and we put a spotlight on, and there, 100 yards in front of us, this big, huge human, boom, dropped on its knee. And then the female dropped on its knee and bent like that. And for 20 minutes with my spotlight, we watched these two creatures, but I could see reflection of eye, two eyes, one eye, like something was breathing with his arm in front of it. And when we bring the dance of the Bukwus, the wild man of woods, to life in our big ceremonies of potlatch and other events, you'll have a costume dancer with a fur-covered costume, a mask that looks like this ape. And when you dance it, you're down low like that. And that's what the Bukwus is said to be like when you see it. It's always hiding behind its hair-covered arm. And at times, you can hear them out here. And what you're listening for is, they chirp when they communicate back and forth. And when they holler, they're whoop, 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 when they call back and forth from one to another. And if you don't believe in it, come stay out here in October into November when the clams get good. And I guarantee you, you're gonna believe in something that, does this, that doesn't just snap, crack, pop in the bush at night. They may even come down and shake some foliage for you if they feel threatened. They may take a stick and bang it against a tree. Bang, 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 bang. And us aboriginals, when we're taught hunting skills, as I taught my son and others, when you hear that banging of a tree, you stop, turn around, and go back where you came from. That's the Bukwis telling you, my family's here. I don't want you coming further. What happens if you go further? Well, just go on the internet and look about missing people who went camping and kayaking. There's always one or two that didn't break their leg or get hypothermia and die or have a heart attack. There's always that small percentage of people that probably didn't heed the warning of the Bukwis and they went further in 
And of course, when you're 700 pounds to 1,000 pounds and you're a bipedal animal with arms about that thick, well, personally, I wouldn't want to piss them off. <laughs>